नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक शॉर्ट सर्किट रेशियो एंड सिंक्रोनाइजिंग पावर कोपिशन सिंपली शॉर्ट सर्किट रेशियो इज द रेशियो ऑफ फील्ड करंट्स फील्ड करंट रिक्वायर्ड टू प्रोड्यूस रेटेड ओपन सर्किट वोल्टेज एंड फील्ड करंट रिक्वायर्ड टू प्रोड्यूस रेटेड आर्मेचर करंट दैट इज आईएससी एंड व्हिच कैन बी डिफाइंड एज the main field current required to produce rated voltage on open circuit to the main field current required to produce rated armature current current on short circuit means here we can represent ia with isc and short circuit ratio is given by 1 by direct axis reactance carried right so how this is obtained means from the open circuit casting and short circuit casting let us suppose this is the open circuit casting which we know that that like is and short circuit casting like this be here and this be the short circuit casting and here let this be the v rated and field current required it to be a and uh, let this be the i rated let this be p and here let this point be c and let this point be d and let this be e and let this be the o and from this definition let us represent scr so scr is given by main field current required to produce rated voltage on open circuit so let this be the voc and corresponding field current is oa by and main field current required to produce rated current on short circuit so let this be the s means this is the ob field current so scr is equal to oa by ob and now observe that OAE triangle and ODB triangle are similar triangles okay observe here from this graph that OAE and OBD triangles are similar triangles which implies OA by OB can be equal to EA by DB from the definition of XD we will see for IF so this is the rated voc for the corresponding if is oa and voc is ac so that is equal to ac and isc for the same if so for the same if oa what is the isc means a now xt per unit is equal to xt by base xt that implies xd is given by ac by a e and base xt means v rated by i rated and v rated is here ac and i rated is bd so ac by bd and this cancel that is equal to bd by a e and observe this and this which implies scr is equal to 1 by xt per unit and this is saturated take so this is the relation and from this you will get the relation that as a scr is inversely proportional to the xt and we know that this is directly proportional to armature reaction which implies scr is inversely proportional to the armature reaction and we know that armature reaction is directly proportional to voltage regulation 
that implies SCR is also inversely proportional to voltage regulation. So short circuit ratio is inversely proportional to the armature reaction and inversely proportional to the voltage regulation. And we know that armature flux phi A is equal to MMF phi reluctance and reluctance is directly proportional to A gap length and phi A is directly proportional to armature reaction that implies as armature reaction is inversely proportional to A gap length and uh, relating to this implies short circuit ratio is directly proportional to the A gap length which implies it is also directly proportional to the size of the machine and also proportional to the cost. Next, synchronizing power coefficient which determines the stability of the machine. Synchronizing power coefficient is defined as rate at which synchronous power changes power varies with respect to load angle delta and here synchronizing power coefficient is also called as rigidity factor or stiffness of coupling are also called as stability factor as power equation P is equal to EV by excess into sine delta. Just remember this equation and it will be discussed in the next topic of power equations. Okay. So here according to the definition of synchronizing power coefficient, it is the rate at which synchronous power varies with respect to the load angle delta. So differentiate it with respect to delta which implies T by D delta of sine delta which implies TV by excess cos delta that implies PSY is equal to EV by excess cos delta. As synchronizing power coefficient determines the stability means stability is directly proportional to synchronizing power coefficient and here if you observe synchronizing power coefficient is inversely proportional to the reactants which implies it is directly proportional to the short circuit ratio that implies stability is directly proportional to SCR and directly proportional to the A gap length. So this is what we have to know finally about the short circuit ratio okay stability is directly proportional to the short circuit ratio and also A gap length. Let's see the order of A gap lengths present in the different machines that is induction machines and DC machines and synchronous machines. So if you observe here synchronous machine is having more air gap length when compared with the induction motor. Why? Why because actually induction motor is designed to operate at good power factors. If air gap length is less power factor will be very good. Whereas in synchronous machines, A gap length is maximum, means here the power factor is very very poor, but this is not the drawback of this machine because by varying the excitation of the synchronous machine, you can get the desired power factor. And here the other point too is stability is directly proportional to air gap length. So to get more stability here, air gap length is maintained more. And uh, the required power factor can be obtained by varying the excitations. So is why here power factor is not considered because required power factor can be obtained by varying the excitation. And here by maintaining air gap length more stability is more. And the air gap length of synchronous machines is four to five times that of induction machines. Whereas in case of salient and cylindrical pole type machines, synchronous machines. Cylindrical type is 
more stable during transient conditions. And salient type is more stable during steady state conditions. During transient condition, cylindrical type is more stable, and during steady state condition, salient pole type is more stable because the power generated by the salient pole type machine is more when compared with the cylindrical type. So that's why this machine is more stable when compared with cylindrical type, and that will be discussed now in power equations. Both power equations. So here power equations for the two types of alternators that is salient pole type of alternators and cylindrical rotor type alternators are discussed here. First let's consider cylindrical pole type alternator. And this is the equivalent circuit of the alternator. This is R and J axis which is Synchronous impedance state as and V at an angle 0 taken as reference here and from here let this be the I A and current I A is equal to E minus V by J S and representing completely in terms of angles plus I A is equal to E at an angle delta minus V at an angle 0 and Z at an angle theta, where theta is impedance angle. So theta is equal to tan inverse of excess pi r. That is, if this is r and if this is excess, and this will be the jets. That implies I A is equal to E by Z into delta minus theta minus V at an angle minus theta by Z. And we know that apparent power is equal to P plus JQ real power and reactive power that can be equal to V into I star. And here that implies I A star. Is equal to E by Z at theta minus delta minus V by Z at an angle theta. Placing this in this and equating real terms and reactive terms, what we get is E is equal to E B by Z S cos theta minus delta minus V square by Z S into cos theta and reactive power Q is given by EV by ZS sin theta minus delta minus V square by ZS sin theta. So these are the two power equations real power and reactive power of cylindrical pole type of alternator and if RA is neglected then theta is equal to 90 degrees that implies P is equal to place theta equal to 90 here and this becomes sign and this will be 0 that implies P is equal to EV by ZS sin delta and Q is equal to EV by ZS into cos minus delta minus v square by z s and sine 90 is 1 that implies q is equal to v by z s into e cos delta minus v so 
So these two are the power equations with R is neglected. So EV by ZS into sine delta and V by ZS into E cos delta minus V. And then condition for maximum power. So differentiate this equation with respect to delta and equate to zero. Then you will get the equation. Then the condition obtained is delta equal to theta. As the condition for maximum power is delta is equal to theta, replace delta with theta. That implies T is equal to EV by ZS cos theta minus and replacing delta with theta minus V square by ZS cos theta. And the cos 0 is 1, that implies EV by ZS minus V square by ZS cos theta. This is the maximum power output. So condition for maximum power output is load angle is equal to impedance angle. Next, power equation for salient pole type alternator. And this can be obtained from the phasor diagram. So draw the phasor diagram of salient pole type of alternator. We know that this is the plus y m and this will be the induced emf and considering the lagging load then this is i a and this will be the v and here neglecting armature resistance r a so here only reactance drops are considered and uh, the components of i a along x axis is i d and the component along y axis is I Q. Now I have to represent the drops due to reactances. So the reactance drop due to I Q current will be perpendicular to the I Q, and the reactance drop due to I D will be perpendicular to the I D current. So this is I D X Q, and next reactance drop due to current IQ. This is IQ X2. Now from this, write the equation of E. So E is equal to where angle between E and V is delta. So V, I am projecting V along E. So V cos delta. Plus ID XD. That implies ID is equal to E minus V cos delta by XD. This is one equation. And then component of V along this direction is V sine delta. I am projecting V along X axis and which is equal to the IQ XQ. That implies IQ is equal to V sine delta by XQ. Now output power P is equal to current ID into component of voltage along D axis plus IQ into component of voltage along Q axis. Component of voltage along direct axis. So along direct axis component of voltage is V sin delta plus IQ into component of voltage along Q axis. Along Q axis component of voltage is V cos delta. Now place these two in this and finally output power P is equal to EV by XT into sine delta plus 
v square by 2 into 1 pi x cube minus 1 pi x d into sin 2 delta. So, this is the output power equation for a serial fault type of alternator. Whereas q is given by ev by x d into cos delta minus v square by 2 into 1 by x q minus 1 by x d into cos 2 delta minus v square by 2 into 1 by x q plus 1 by x d. So these are the real power and reactive power equations for a serial pole type of alternator. And if you observe the power equation of serial pole type of alternator, this term is similar to that of power equation which we obtained in case of cylindrical pole type of alternator, which means this represents the electromagnetic power. Okay, the EM we represent. And whereas this is the power due to reluctance. So is why this we are present with P R L means the power due to salient pole type of rotary is electromagnetic power plus reluctance power. As here when compared with the cylindrical pole rotor, the power output is maximum. Means this is the reason why salient pole type of alternator is said to be more stable when compared with cylindrical pole type of alternator because here power is more and which is because of reluctance power and this reluctance power constitutes about 15 to 20 percent of the power is reluctance power and one more point to be discussed about salient pole type of alternator when connected to infinite bus bar suppose the machine is operating as alternator synchronous machine operating as alternator means this is supplying real power and reactive power to the infinite bus path. Now let us suppose the field excitation to this alternator has gone due to some other reason. Then what happens means it continues to deliver power to the infinite bus path. How? How means it takes reactive power from the bus path and creates the working flux and then it will deliver reluctance power means this machine is acting as reluctance generator next 13th power angle curves and short angle curves and synchronizing power coefficient curves so let's see first power angle curves. Power angle curves for cylindrical rotor case as T is equal to EV by axis into sine delta that implies torque is equal to P by omega that is equal to let us suppose this be P max. So P max sin delta by omega. So obviously both P and T are sin functions and T always will be less than the P because it is divided by W means omega angular velocity. So P versus delta T versus delta. The sine function let us suppose this be the P And this will be the top curves. And this point of top is called pull out top or break out top or stalling top. So beyond this value of load angle, what happens? Torque is decreasing, so power is also decreasing, which implies this comes under unstable region.
as power is decreasing and this is stable region and this is the case of generator and exactly opposite this is the case of motor and T max and P max are possible for delta is equal to 90 degrees and if you observe here from this angle to this angle the curves are linear means delta is having range 30 to 45 degrees and for in case of motor this is stable region and this is unstable region now let's move to the salient port type alternator salient pole type alternator salient pole type alternator has two powers that is reference power and electromagnetic power and electromagnetic power let us represent like this e versus delta and reluctance power is having sine to delta which means this is and the resultant is output power p so if you add up what happens is this will become the output power and if you observe here that maximum power p max is obtained at delta less than 90 degrees whereas in this case p max and t max are obtained at delta equal to 90 degrees and here p max and t max are obtained at less than 90 degrees that is around 60 to 70 degrees t max and p max circles so this is p reluctance and this is electromagnetic power and this is the case of generator and this is the stable region this is the unstable region and this is the motor case and here one more important point to be discussed is if the excitation of salient pole type of pattern is failed then what happens electromagnetic power will not be there then only reluctance power will be present so then the t max and p max occurs at 45 degrees in case of excitation failure p rel is only present which implies t max and p max occurs at delta is equal to 45 degrees and next synchronizing power coefficient which is the rate of change of synchronous power and given by ev by excess cos delta okay as power p is equal to ev by excess sin delta as p s by is the rate of change of sequence power with respect to delta so ev by excess cos delta and this is for cylindrical alternator case and now draw the p curve P versus delta and uh, from the earlier topic what we have determined that this is the portion of stable region and this is the portion of unstable region okay now drawing the ps record so as it is cosine function it will start from here and like this it will be so this is psy and here psy is used for determining the stability so observe here if the PSY is positive, means D P by D delta is positive, that implies PSY is positive, that implies stable. And D P by D delta is here negative, which implies D P by D delta is synchronizing power coefficient is negative which implies negative in unstable region 
If PSY is positive, then we can say that it is stable. If PSY is negative, we can say that it is unstable. And for salient pole type, curves will be, PSY curve will be like this. Will be like this.